We're going to start with a size 12 clink and hammer style hook. We're going to use yellow thread and we're going to use thread that matches the body dubbing. Now we're going to burn, use a burnt yellow goose by it. It's just like darker on the outside, but yellow in the middle of the goose by it. And if you go to your local fly tying place and ask them if you want goose by it to tie yellow stones, they'll hook you up. Especially if you go to the blue herrings. Well, these goose by have a natural curve to them. And you want to make sure you put the curve so they would curve everything out and not in so that you get a V shape out of them. You want one on each side of the eye of the hook. Welcome to Everything Fly Fishing where we tie flies that catch not only fishermen but fish. And also go check out our sponsor Russell's Guide Service. Link below in the description. Now back to the time video. And now I'm going to use a quarter inch bead. I would use this, if you look at the packets of beads, they tell you what size hooks they're for. I'd use on the smaller size. So go to like the smallest size bead they recommend for a size 12 hook. If you use too big, it'll come off the eye of the hook and fall off your fly. You don't want that. We're going to tie our thread, or run our thread back, tie it back in, cut off the tag end and run that thread back in to right where that the, the barb and the hook is to tie in our tail. And then we're going to tie our goose bits by it, same one we used for the front ones, but we're going to make them a little bit longer than the front ones, about twice as long as the front ones. We want to tie them, use the bend of the, the natural bend of the bayat to make them bend out in the V, like you did the front. And then you're going to wrap that, your thread and the bayat all the way back up to where the bead is. You're going to use the, the goose bite to help build up your body. You have to use less dubbing. Now you're going to tie in a black wire for a rib. Now you, I'm going to use a uh, gold stone dubbing. I think it's a possum, Australian possum or something, but just go to your tines favorite tying place. I got mine at Blue Herring again in Milton. 
and uh, get whatever they have that says golden stone dubbing. I usually wrap the dubbing about halfway up the hook shank, maybe a little bit further. Now you know, rib it with that black wire. Now you're going to tie in some nymph skin. I'm going to cut it about a quarter inch wide. Definitely don't forget to remove the paper. And you're going to tie that doll side up, shiny side down. So when you bend it over, that sunny side will be up. Now we're going to turn the thread back up to the behind the bead and we're going to tie in our lively legs. And I'm going to show you which way they go and you're going to tie them front legs right up against the bead. And run your thread all the way back right behind the last set of legs. Now you want to cut them lively leg tabs off. There's one in the front and one in the back. And it just makes it easier for you to tie them in. So you can just go pull up on them and cut them off. Now you're going to use this dubbing. This is, it's either in your box as gill dubbing. If you don't have any of that, you mix white. A light dubbing like a white or a really light off-white with your um, body dubbing that Australian or dubbing mix whatever you got that said Yellowstone and you mix that and that'll make Yellowstone gill dubbing if you look at the yellow actual Yellowstone in nature it's really light around its gill so you're gonna use this gill now we take some of that dubbing and wrap it behind the back legs just a little bit and then fold the nymph skin over and tie it down in front of the back legs so you're going to tie that nymph skin down in front of the, the last set of legs and then you're going to keep tying it down all the way up to behind the next set of legs
Now you're going to bend the nip skin back towards the back of the fly and tie it again from that set of legs back to the first set of legs. So now you kind of made a hump. And you can dub it again and tie that skin down in front of the next set of legs and repeat the process. And then when you get that nymph skin right behind the bead, you're going to tie it, the nymph skin down, cut the nymph skin. If you usually leave a little tab of nymph skin and you tie it right behind the bead, I just bend it back and wrap it over top of the other nymph skin. And just stepping up of the nymph skin will make it look like a real natural yellow skin. It's hard to tell the difference. The only thing that helps you tell the difference is that bead. Without that bead, they look exactly like the ones on in the water. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful, you and me We're meant to be Outdoors Forever free you like that video like I said this is where we tie flies that catch fish not only fishermen hope you like that fly I love this fly in the fall because as you know most um, going or stone flies only hatch every two years so they don't go back down to size really teeny size like all your mayflies right now are size 18 and these make a great fly as a point fly when you're urine nymphing or anything like that to get you down quick and then tail by small little pheasant tails or whatever. But there you go. There you have it. This today's this Friday this video and I'll see you next Friday for another time video. Keep your lines wet out of the trees and only give them fish a sore lip. Have a good day.